and uh, welcome back to Henley. I'm sure um, it's quite regular. Um, for the purposes of today, we're, um, we're going to be looking at um, balanced scorecard, but uh, we'll start off our discussion with performance measurement system. Um, but before we start, just to give you a little bit of introduction to myself, I'm part of the associate faculty at Henley, which basically means I'm not here all the time um, within the strategy area. And uh, my background is as an aeronautical engineer from a long time ago, longer than I can really? remember. <laughs> no wonder you were up there singing Kumbaya. Good credentials. Um, and then moved into um, agricultural machines, financial services, and over the last fifteen years, years. <laughs> <laughs> over the last fifteen years, I've had my own consulting business. Um, okay, um, within the automotive sector, food sector, and basically any sector that's prepared to, to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fussy. Um, so, what, so what I found is that um, a lot of what we're going to be talking about, a lot of what I tried to talk about, um, both from a strategy and from an implementation point of view, largely um, is focused on a practical level. Um, I think that with the MBA as well, one of the things you should be looking for is looking to how you apply the concepts as opposed to trying to remember any of the concepts. You know, it's easy enough to pick a book up and uh, remember what the concept is much more difficult um, to apply it. And I think Balanced Scorecard is one of those examples where a lot of people, uh, and I would say probably about 90, 95% of people do it badly, uh, which is why it gets very bad press. Um, but it is actually a very effective tool when used properly. So the objective for this evening is really to personally demonstrate and the, to demonstrate the purpose and design of an appropriate performance measurement system which is going to be the balance scorecard, and to demonstrate the role of strategy within the performance measurement system, because that's really where these performance measurement systems fall down, is that they actually have no strategy attached to them. So we're going to try to make a link between the two. Firstly, though, what's the, um, what's the role of a performance measurement system? To improve performance. Okay, improve performance. But we can quite easily improve performance without a performance measurement system. Just make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a better way of putting it. But, um, it okay. Yeah. Yeah. Suppose we're we doing achieve goals. Would that be fair? Yeah. Provide feedback on how well you're going yeah. along. Feedback which means that you're looking at some form of alteration or adaptation based on the information that's being provided. Like a benchmark? Yeah, we'd be looking at a benchmark. Anything else? Uh, a means of pain. Okay, could be used as a reward mechanism. It's interesting that when you look at reward mechanisms, the way a lot of them are designed, one of the shortfalls of a lot of performance measurement systems is that actually they're very difficult to try to, for an individual, to try to determine what their contribution to the overall performance of the organisation actually is. I always remember at uh, Massey Ferguson, I was very excited when I joined as strategy manager. I had a good salary and I had a lovely bonus that was going to come at you know, at the end of the year. Unfortunately, you needed two damn degrees to work out what that performance bonus was going to be. Um, so it was so complicated that not even HR knew how to work it out. So, <laughs> so as you know, in all situations like that, you, you, you never get what you're supposed to get. And um, you find that that can be a great demotivator in the implementation of strategy. Anything else? Well, the key really here is achieve the goals is basically it's an implementation of strategy, which means that before you even start thinking about performance measurement systems, you need to know what direction you're planning to go to go in. The danger is, is that you end up, like I said before, yes, we can improve performance, we can just keep running up uh, blind alleys. We'll improve performance for a while until eventually it gets out of hand. So we need some form of feedback 
that allows us to alter the direction <coughs> against some objective that we may have set in the first place. What different types of uh, performance measurement systems are there? Okay, so you've got basic financial reporting systems. Yeah. You mentioned what? Benchmarking. Benchmarking. That would be a giveaway. <laughs> Anything else? Any other systems? <laughs> the thing is, with other benchmark, you can do it against other companies, you can do it against prior years. And yeah. you know, Basically, it's a philosophy, isn't it? A philosophy of monitoring. Because there are so many different determinants and variables that you can actually be measuring against. Essentially, they're the two most common systems that are used within organizations. What are some of the shortfalls? of those systems? Short-termism. Short-termism. Yep. They're not necessarily pushing you towards innovation because the ones you're, you're benchmarking against might not be better. They're just, you know, in the same... No, no, I won't say that. Uh, no, say it. No. <laughs> they're, they're in the same situation as you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so they might not be better, might be just as bad as you, and your benchmark against them, which doesn't lead you forward. Sure, yeah. It, um, it slows innovation down. Anything else? Just in terms of focus. You're too focused on something yeah. without considering how the whole thing works. Too focused on the wrong variables. Yeah. Yeah. We're just focused on, on one variable, which so on wrong and few variables. Inflexible. Inflexible, yeah. I.e., you can't change direction very quickly. There's something about not always measuring the things that create real value. So. So they may not be the value drivers. Yeah. I suppose you could say, why would you measure them? But then I've often been guilty of that. So. <laughs> because you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a true, very true statement. Because you can. A lot of the time, that is the main fault with them, is that um, they are too easy to measure. And as a result, what you find is that, you know, I've often had the common thrown, oh, well, that's going to take ages to do. Well, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, and everyone would be... be would be very successful. The truth is, is that these things take time, these things take a lot of effort, and they take a redesign of the organization. You know, people think performance measurement system, what you do is at the end, you just measure a whole load of variables. You've actually got to redesign literally the whole organization to reflect the performance measurement system if it's going to work effectively. So what we're finding here is short-termism, finance, money. Once you've lost it, you've lost it. You know, what's the first response to losing money? Why do we do that? How does yeah. that happen? Yeah, and as a result of that, what do companies generally do once they've lost the money? Cut they cut expenses, they cut costs. What's that doing? Firstly, you start eating away at the fat of the organization. Then you start eating into the muscle of the organization and you get corporate anorexia. The company gets too damn thin to be able to proceed any further in the longer term. I.e., what you're doing is you're killing off any prospect of um, performance, future performance. With the innovation, <coughs> those measures do not drive innovation. You know, whichever measures you take, they don't drive innovation. Um, and if we're looking at today's environment, which is dynamic, ever-changing, very competitive, innovation is one of the key factors of success. So overall what you find is that these kind of systems have a number of shortfalls. 